This is a tutorial on how VTube Step and VTube Laser can predetermine the overbend necessary in order to overcome springback, or as commonly referred to in the industry as springback compensation. Springback compensation has to do with anticipating what the bend angles should be on the bender in order to more quickly come to the right bend angle after the clamp and the pressure die and other dies have released the bend, because there's always some memory in the tube. In this case, I've got a tube that I've created with a 90 degree bend and a 135 degree bend angle. If we were to send this data out to a supervision file, this is one of many file formats that is used in the bending industry, we would see that the data inside the file is exactly what's shown on the screen here. The lengths 4, 2, and 4, and then we have the rotation, and then we have the bend angles, 90 and 135. In this case, there is no springback compensation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Part Setup, and we're going to seek to discover these two values, the fixed and the proportional springback values. We're going to bend apart, and then we're going to come into the overbend calculator and enter values based upon the bent part. In this case, we've bent apart that starts at 20 degrees and that finishes with 120. It's a very common set of angles to use in the industry. Then we're going to measure the part that we bent and we're going to find that the bend angles are less than the nominal because they're springback. There's always memory in the part. If we used VTube laser in order to measure the 20 and the 120 bend angles in the part, then we would be able to bring those values in here. We could copy the first bend angle into here and copy the second bend angle into here by pressing these two buttons. When we move to the next page, we calculate the proportional and the fixed values. The proportional is a percentage, which means that VTube is going to instruct the bender to increase the bend angle by 2%. And the fixed value means that VTube is going to add 1.6 degrees to the bend. So if we move over into the report page, we can see what that looks like, for example, for a 90 degree bend. In this case, we find, according to our test, that there is 3.44 degrees of spring back. This tube would have a lot of memory. That's quite a bit of memory that's causing the tube to spring back. So in order to overcome that spring back tendency, we have to overbend 3.44 degrees. In other words, we have to tell the, the bender during the first setup that you're going to overbend 3.44 to 93.44 degrees. So we're going to use the formula, this formula here, and these values here in order to come up with these values here. We're going to save to the part setup and so now we see that we have fixed spring back and we have proportional spring back. If we go to the tube data menu and we go to bend setup we're going to save the supervision file again and observe the results. Now let's compare the data. You can see that the length data is different. It's slightly shorter. Instead of 4, we have 3.95. The reason for this shortening is because straight lengths will give up material to the adjacent bends that are being overbent. So we also see here that the bend angles have changed from 90 to 93.4 from 135 to 139.3. So this is the way that tube fabricators can get closer to the nominal part the first time if they know the characteristics of springback and the material they're bending. So that's how you use the overbend calculator in VTube in order to compensate for springback during the setup of a part the first time.